The first clues to Enron's new strategy hit California with a jolt. It started at noon, rolling across the state. Sacramento, San Francisco, Beverly Hills, Long Beach, San Diego. 26,000 miles of California power lines, enough to circle the earth. But for the second day in a row, not enough electricity for America's largest state and the world's sixth largest economy. California's deregulated system was a bizarre compromise between legislators and free market advocates. The rules were complicated and hard to follow. Inside Enron, California's system was little more than a joke. And once in place, Enron made sure that the joke would be on California. And I remember the conversation I had with Ken. At the end of it, he says, well, Dave, old buddy, let me just tell you, it doesn't matter really to us what kooky rules you Californians put in place. I got a bunch of really smart people down there to figure out how to make money anyhow. One of the smartest guys at Enron was Tim Belden, who ran the West Coast trading desk. Tim Belden was a fervent believer in the idea of free markets, and as such, he spent hours poring over the new rules for the deregulation of California's energy industry, looking for loopholes that Enron could exploit to make money. He found plenty. After the bankruptcy, a confidential memo surfaced revealing the names of Belden's strategies to game the California market. Wheel out, get shorty, fat boy. Recently, audio tapes of the Enron traders were discovered. What do you want to call this project? Uh, I had the catchy name for that. <laughs> How about, you know, something friendly like Death Star? <laughs> The tapes revealed Enron's contempt for any values except one, making money. Hey, John, it's Tim. The regulatory is all in a big concern about is we're wheeling power out of California. He just steals money from California to the tune of a Can million. Can we rephrase that? Okay, he arbitrages the California market to the tune of a million bucks or two a day. <laughs> um, an arbitrage opportunity has been defined to me as any opportunity to make abnormal profit. So an abnormal profit would be um, returns above and beyond the norm. I was told that a good trader is a creative trader, and a creative trader is a trader that can find arbitrage opportunities. One of those opportunities was called ricochet. I'll see you guys. I'm taking mine to the desert. In the midst of the energy shortages, Enron traders started to export power out of the state. When prices soared, they brought it back in. So we fucking export like a motherfucker. You're getting rich. Trying to. Traders would stay after a 12-hour shift and pour over maps of the Western energy grid. What are the permutations and combinations of ways to move power around the West? And I think that's something that Enron knew better than any other energy marketer in the country, period. We know all of the California imports. We know all of the California load. They're getting pretty spoiled on with this money. You said you were getting a little scared or making a little too much, and I, I tend to agree with you. <laughs> These are two traders, T-R-A-D-E-R-S, this is what they say. What we did was overbook the transmission line we had the rights on and said to California Utilities, if you want to use the line, pay us. By the time they agreed to meet our price, rolling blackouts had already hit California, and the price for electricity went through the roof. Did you have any knowledge that this was happening? The only, the only thing that I'm aware of, Senator, is there was a, uh, there was a difference of opinion on the rules of the independent system operator. It was just set up. The rules okay. weren't quite, quite clear. We have traders here from Enron who were saying they did something wrong, but you don't see anything wrong. I have one last question and then I am done. Traders soon discovered that by shutting down power plants, they could create artificial shortages that would push prices even higher. Hey, uh, this is David up at Enron. Uh -huh. There's not much uh, demand for power at all, and we're, if we shut it down, could you bring it back up in three or four hours? Oh, yeah. Why don't you just go ahead and shut her down, then, if that's okay? I want you guys to get a little creative okay. and come up with a reason to go down. Like a forced outage type thing. Right. Those guys, at the flip of a switch, could just yank the California economy on its leash whenever they wanted to, and they did it, and they did it, and they did it, and they made so much money. 
there would be ample supply available at the right fucking price. Oh, sure there would. And it wasn't just Enron. Every company traded according to the to the rules that uh, California put up there. And we're the future of Enron. And we're fucking making half a billion dollars for Enron. Can you believe that? Yeah. We'll definitely retire by we're 30. And we're talking about a commodity that normally trades in the $35 to $45 range. High prices are when it gets in the 50s for $1,000. Prices aren't going to stay at 1000 bucks forever. If we tell the weak people in the market, you know, get rid of them. And you know what? The people who are strong stick around it. And the Enron traders never seem to step back and say, wait, is what we're doing ethical? Is it in our best long-term interests? Does it help us if we totally rape California? Does that advance our goals of nationwide deregulation? Instead, they sought out every, every loophole they could in order to profit from California's misery. Temperatures in California are hitting higher than 100 degrees, fueling wildfires and fears that California's strained power grid could once again near collapse. What's happening? There's a fire under the core line. It's been derated from 45 to 2100. Burn, baby, burn. That's a beautiful thing. I was never comfortable on the trading floor at Enron. And if I had questions, I, I didn't ask them because I, I didn't want to know the answer. I, you know, I didn't want confirmed what, what I suspected might be true that what I was doing was in fact unseemly um, or was at least unethical, if, if not worse. Why did the traders do what they did? Was it their multi-million dollar bonuses? Or had Enron found a way to exploit the darker side of human behavior?